Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Paola. Welcome to my New York City apartment. Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, my name is Paola Saracino Fendi, and you're in my home. I live in the Upper East Side of New York City in a pre-war classic six apartment. My husband and I have been living here for two years. We've lived in London for 10 years. And when we moved back to New York, I really wanted something that reminded me of home. And I grew up in the Upper East Side. I grew up in a pre-war building. And when I came across this apartment, it felt exactly the same charm and the moldings and the warmth that I had in my childhood apartment. So it was a really easy option. So a classic six is that it's in a pre-war building, it's set up, it's a two bedroom and a half type of apartment, but they're always set up with the living room that's a certain space and a dining room that is a certain space. And the reason why I was looking for a pre-war building is that new developments have um, you know these living rooms and um, kitchens that are all in one space and i really loved having a division between each space uh, to kind of create uh, a different vibe in each room which uh, i think you can feel in this apartment my husband and i we lived in a new development in london and the way that it was decorated was very was very modern was really contemporary it felt like a Mondrian painting that it was all black white red and when I came over here I really wanted a different type of environment and a change and something that reminded us of our time in London and our time in Europe and that's why we brought over our really good friends uh, Duncan Campbell and Charlotte Ray to help us with this apartment as they know us really well I've known them for almost 15 years and they have the exact type of style that we do with regards to color and playing with fabrics and playing with different um, textures and mixing the past with the present. Uh, and so they were the perfect partners for this. The Fendi Company was started by my great-grandmother Adela Fendi in 1925. And it started as a small leather and umbrella shop. Um, of coats and bags and accessories in, in Rome. And to this day, it's still based in Rome. It's now based in the Palazzo de Civiltà. And the creative director for menswear and accessories is my aunt Silvia Venturini Fendi. And the head designer for jewelry is um, my cousin Delfina Della Tres Fendi and our really good friend who is the artistic director of women's wear and of haute couture is Kim Jones. And luckily enough, he was a really great friend of mine when I was living in London. And this was even before he started Fendi. So now he's now part of the family. <laughs> um, but the company around 2016 sold to LVMH. And even though it's not a family run company, Kim 
has really involved us in, in things that he's done. And because we still have family members that work there, we're still quite involved. So when we were looking for the apartment, um, we knew exactly that it had to be in the Upper East Side because I wanted to be where I grew up. It's a neighborhood that I know. And when I was searching on Street Easy, I basically checked marked doorman, pets friendly, and fireplace <laughs> because those were essentials. Uh, we have a little dog and um, I always wanted the idea of having a fireplace even though my husband said that's not essential. But for me it was. And when I walked into the apartment because this was during COVID and my husband was still in London, uh, I saw the moldings, I saw the light, I saw the fireplace, and I was like, this is it. And funnily enough, I grew up only a block away from where we are at now, and it just was like, okay, this is really meant to be, and it felt like fate. Uh, so I only saw the apartment once. Um, I didn't tell my husband and I put an offer in. And then once we got it, I told him, surprise, we have an apartment. <laughs> um, thankfully, he loved it. Uh, and he, he knew that um, it was a really the right place for, for our home. Another reason why I really liked this type of apartment is that you don't enter right in the living room and you have a separate foyer, like an entrance way. And to kind of bring it really filled with light and to expand it and feel larger, we put in these mirrors, which I love. So you can check before you leave and check when you enter that you don't have crazy hair from the windy New York City. So this is a custom runner by Campbell Ray with Nordic Knots. Uh, it was a special collaboration. And the colors of the foyer, especially with the kind of whites and it's a type of like lavender gray and the yellow and the green, they all come from one of the works that we have in our house, which is by Wolfgang Tillmans. And it's of Frank Ocean in the shower. And it's him in the shower with his green hair and it's kind of like gray and lavendery. And um, when we were looking at colors for the house, we did pick up a lot of the colors that are in the works that we had at the time. So that one of them, I just remember that that was really significant with regards to the, these colors of the house. And um, here we have some little plates and things that we keep our change and they're from, they're by Look Edward, Edward Hall for Richard Genori. Uh, again, a really great friend of ours and he is um, Duncan's husband. So, and another person I've, known for a really long time so we really cherish having all these little bits and bobs from um, our friends this is a bag that i use every day it's my winter bag and it's actually i don't think a lot of people know this um but the original emblem of fendi was a squirrel so in 1925 when Fendi started their emblem was a squirrel so throughout the house we do have instances of squirrels and even in Massimo's room there's some stuffed squirrels um, and my grandmother actually collects uh, has a collection of squirrel things um, because that is our family emblem and then when Karl Lagerfeld joined um, he was the one that created the double F symbol which you see now in all the logos and the baguettes and the buckles. But before that, it was this. And so this is a very old vintage um, Fendi that I, anytime that it's winter, I pull out because of the shirling inside and it's just warm and cozy and it fits. It's my work bag. And so I keep that out there. So this console table is from Glass Italia and we fell in love with it immediately. I love the bright yellow in contrast with everything else and again it brings light to the entrance and what I am I do not have a green thumb uh, also I travel a lot I'm I work a lot so I'm definitely not home to be like watering plants or anything um, they usually die <laughs> however there's this wonderful artist uh, her Instagram name is the green vase she's based in Brooklyn and she creates these wonderful 
um, handmade like paper flowers. So we have one here and it just, I love it because it gives, it really, they look so real. And when I saw it on her Instagram, I, I had to get it immediately. And I have some that I just take out whenever, um, you know, we're traveling for a long time and they, no one's around to really water the plants or anything. And she's fantastic. And she does plants. She does all different types of flowers, singular stems. She's really great. So, and then that's Massimo's little bike that I love. That was a gift actually from our friends, Galu and Mike. So we love that. Um, and then this was a recent addition as well. Her name's Diane Del Pro. And she's an artist based in Paris, and she shows with Galerie de Rion, who are really great friends of mine. But I saw her work, I want to say, um, over five years ago, the Cobb Gallery, where we bought a print in Massimo's room, is um, showed her work, and I completely fell in love. I wouldn't call myself a collector. I, I think... Aram and I really love things <laughs> and, and things that are, are pieces of us. And um, we have a collection, but I don't describe myself as an art collector. Um, I think we just got really lucky that, um, and this comes from my grandmother who also collects things that she loves from Japanese antiquities to old masters to modern art that we felt that let's do an extension of that. And Diane really felt in tune with what our, our kind of um, ethos is with regards to the works that we have. And they're mainly of female artists and they deal with surrealism and things that have to do with the body, with fabric. And again, this stems from my family and from the Fendi family of being, you know, a, a company built by women, uh, a company about dreams, about fabric, about texture. And, and that's kind of the basis, the foundation of the works that we've been lucky enough to include in our life. And when we saw this, it only fits here, <laughs> so that's why it's placed here, but it was kismet, so we knew it was fate because we found a wall that fit, um, but I'm not allowed anything larger. <laughs> so this is our living room. I think with every room of this house, it really began with the artworks that we brought over from London when we moved here, and when we were thinking about the color of the living room, Charlotte and Duncan said, why don't we do pink? It really goes well with a lot of the artworks. They did a project before that they did it in the entrance way and it worked out really well. And they said it's a type of white that go, you know, brings out pink and they were right. However, when the the painter did the first round of pink and I walked in, it was bubblegum pink. And my, I just knew my husband was still in London. I didn't say anything, but I knew that he was already a little bit uneasy with having his living room. And this is where we spend most of our time being pink. Of course, he trusted me with these things. But um, when I saw bubblegum pink, I was like, I think this is gonna be a bit too much and we mixed in some white and just, so that's why there isn't, I don't know what color this is because we mixed in a couple of different things so that it came out and we kept trying and, and it came out with this pink that it really is more of a warm white um, that in certain lights you can see more of the pink. Um, and, and with the artworks it brings out so well especially like the ones that are on white or works on paper you can really tell and it's not and it goes with our carpet that's from my aunt um and and it just brought everything together and so all the other pieces you know first was the artworks then was the walls and then that's when we really decided on the colors and the fabrics of all the other pieces we 
because the home in our home in London is so different, we really brought few pieces over. Um, these are all either things that we had custom made, that we found in auction houses, that we found on first dibs, that I've collected from my grandmother's house on both sides, uh, things from my parents, things from Aaron's parents. So it's a collection of things, but it never really lived once together and we really didn't have anything to pull from. So, you know, when I was talking about the the apartment, I was like, okay, let's start with the main pieces, which is I need a bed, <laughs> I need a couch, and I need a dining room table. And those were like the, the anchors of each room because once we knew what we liked, um, we just grew from there and that was, it was actually perfect. And then little by little, and now we've been here for two years, we've just been adding and little bits and bobs. So these are from my Spanish grandmother, so my maternal grandmother on my mom's side. Um, and they're antique Staffordshire dogs that I'm absolutely obsessed and I want to buy more of them. I, I, um, I think when I'm like come back 10 years from now and I have a feeling that this is, this fireplace is gonna just be with like so many different dogs. Um, and then um, these are from my Italian grandmother on my dad's side and same with these and they're all antiques. I don't even know from when, but you know, it was, it was really sweet of them that when um, they saw the apartment, they were like, oh, this really feels like it should be a part of it. So it's not just my husband and I or Charlotte and Duncan that decorated the apartment. It was actually a full family effort from my grandmothers to my parents because they just, each one were inspired from different elements of, of the house. Um, these are Murano custom made mirrors um, that Charlotte and Duncan had made and I'm obsessed with Murano. Um, the, I love like vases and, and I think I have around here. Oh yes, I have here. Um, this is an idea I got actually from Luke and Duncan. They had um, these uh, Murano candies uh, in their ashtrays in, in their apartment. I was like, oh, that's so brilliant. And they're just really fun and you can just leave them so you don't have to get worried about like candy going really old or people you know, eating a candy that has probably been there for like a year. Um, and that I got from them and that was a really great little addition, but I love that material a lot. So there's little pieces around the house that are made of Murano. When I was looking for the apartment, yes, I ticked off fireplace on my Street Easy app because I was obsessed with having a fireplace. We've been here for two years. We have not used the fireplace. I think my husband, since we've never had one, we're a little bit scared to see what happens. It's been cleaned. It should be working. I don't know how to start a fire, so I won't be doing that anytime soon. Um, our, we do have like a storage downstairs for, because all the apartments in this building have fire working fireplaces. We have a storage specifically for wood fire downstairs. And ours is apparently like up to the brim because we haven't, we haven't used it. But uh, because of this and the fact that I'm saying that, I will 100% tell my husband, we really should use this fireplace this month. Uh, but it looks great. And I also really wanted to have like something to put things on because <laughs> I love different little things. Uh, and I, I think like around the house, I have frames everywhere. Um, for me, what I put on the walls is like art, but what I have in photographs and family memories, I love little frames to put around the house. And one day I hope like, years from now that our entrance console will just be covered in family frames. Like you don't even have space to put like your keys because that's that's my aim. And my friends know that when a birthday comes by or they need to get me a gift and they don't know what, I love, like all the frames we have are gifted frames and that's why they're all different types of frames. Because uh, again, I don't like, monotony. I don't like the same thing over and over again. I really like the eclectic and you can tell from the various different little things, but that goes with frames as well. And I always will find a photo 
for a frame. These pillows is a fabric that I love by Duro Oluwu. Uh, he's a fashion designer um, and really kind of trendsetter in, in, um, in London. I have one of his books because he also curates shows and I love him. I think he has really excellent taste. Um, the fabric was sold out, but Charlotte and Duncan were able to find me some for some pillows just to have a piece of him because his uh, store and studio are, is right next to where I used to work. So I used to go there all the time. So again, it's tying into these special moments that we had in London um, with the every part of the apartment. This painting is from a really good friend of ours named Issy Wood, and it's of a Fendi bag. So it really was a no-brainer. I've loved her work from the very start, and she is shown with another good friend of mine, Vanessa Carlos at Carlos Ishikawa. So when I saw this painting, and you know, they're the ones that sent it to me, they're like, this, you have to have it. And we completely agreed, so it's, this will forever stay here. Um, there's sometimes we move around things because maybe we've bought something new, but there's certain things that we just won't move and that's one of them. And then the Sarah ball as well. It's, um, Aram and I got engaged and we went to St. Ives in England and we, we just came across this small gallery in St. Ives and she did the most incredible portraits. Her show, of course, was completely sold out and we asked if she would make another one for us and she kindly did. And this was the first painting Aaron and I bought together as a couple. So it's really important to us because it's really that we kind of came together and decided because beforehand it was really myself because of my work. And now that we're married and going forward, it's really a, a, a dual decision. Um, this is a special blanket that my friends Ed Tang and John Auerbach made for Massimo. I love it. And it goes with the house, so I keep it out all the time. These are special editioned blankets that are from House of Voltaire which is this store that, ha it's a pop-up store that happens once every two years that's run by Studio Voltaire. It's a nonprofit exhibition space and gallery in London. And to raise funds for the, for the gallery, they invite the artists that have exhibited there to make special little things for them. And they've been doing this now for, um, quite a while and I bought both the blankets that are here. This one's by um, Brian Calvin and that one is from Sonia Kontorowski and they're just so fun and honestly if you're ever in London and it's it's always around November, December and you're lucky enough to see it's so much fun and they have like all of these like pictures and candlesticks and napkins and blankets and even special editions all by really incredible artists. And I really recommend. I know Jonas Wood did one of like cashmere. This is just wool, but they're really so fun. I'll have little things from them around the house. And I just always thought it was such a brilliant way to raise money for the gallery. My aunt, Federica has a store in Rome where it's called Triple F and she, it's a vintage store, vintage um, like homeware, furniture, clothes, accessories. Uh, what's so cool about it as well as the building, it's an old artist studio of Mario Schifano and I bought these from her. They're hand painted. Uh, she has a lot of like 30s, 40s, 50s, Italian, modern, and these are all hand-painted scenes of Rome. I use them as dessert plates. I use them as around the house. Um, I'm obsessed with coasters everywhere. So it's just options for people when they're home to like put their glass on or leave something or have a plate nearby. So I always have that option around the house um, so that people can just put their, their things on there. And, and on top, this is also Italian. It's Aldotura. Um, 
and I'm obsessed with what he does. And it's always um, kind of like an animal skin covered in resin and they're super durable. They're super lightweight. I found three of them that stack together so I can use them around the house or put them away. And uh, I absolutely adore Aldo Tura and he does a bunch of different things. And then over here, um, this is a little addition from my husband. Uh, he thought it was hysterical, but it's really fun. It's just, uh, he found it, we added it, and it's kind of like our character. And it's on top of this table that was gifted to us from our family friend, Patricia Orchiola, who is an architect. I think it's exactly what we wanted with our home. And that it brings light and brings color. And even though she did not know what the apartment looked like, I sent her a picture afterwards when I got the table and she was like, it could not be more perfect. So again, bits and pieces from our family that helped decorate the house. I am not in fashion. <laughs> I made that uh, a bit of a choice. I, I did start in fashion journalism and I realized I really wanted to make my own path still creative, still in the artistic world um, because I have those sensibilities. Now I am an art consultant for a uh, art advisory firm called Schwartzman Ant and it's founded by the guru art advisor Alan Schwartzman, and I work there as a senior art advisor on different projects. We work with artists, museums, and collectors. And what I love there is that it changes every day. The projects are really completely different. And I love that I work with both living artists and art estates, and as well, curating, curating homes like this one for people um, their personal collections, whether it be something that they want to put make public, so a private museum or something that they just want to keep in their home. And that's why I've, you know, along the way of my 10 years in, in this field, I've kind of collected a network of really wonderful friends within this art world. So this is the dining room and Again, one of the most used rooms in the house. We love having people over. And this was, again, a huge thing about the apartment and what we were looking for. We wanted a really nice flow between the kitchen, the, the dining room, and the living room. But again, that each one had its own identity. When we came into the apartment, the previous owners had wallpaper everywhere. And I loved the idea of using wallpaper. We didn't have any wallpaper in our previous flat. And I wanted to do something really that felt like old New York. So when we were looking at um, inspiration, we were looking at David Hicks, who uses a lot of patterns and florals and the fabrics. And that goes, oh, you can see that a lot in the bedroom and here in the dining room. And we found this wallpaper, which is from Ixel. And it's actually how Ixel does is that these are photographs taken of actual murals in old houses in, in, the, in various places around the world. This one was actually Queen Victoria's bedroom, I think. And, and then they superimpose it on different colors so you can pick the color that you want. Um, and different designs come with different colors. And we just found this one was the type of green that we wanted because we already had the idea of doing pink in the living room and then green in the dining room and having these kind of like cross the way that the furniture is green in one room and here there's more like browns and it's it's much darker but still light reflecting with with the pink color uh, so that was the wallpaper and the i love Again, because I love hosting, I have a lot of plates and I guess a collection of plates. So we needed storage because the kitchen did not have enough storage for all the plates that I have. And Campbell Ray created these two consoles to kind of keep all the stuff that we have that are for entertaining. And I just love being able to pick and choose different colors or different placemats or different, depending on the mood, also the season. And since it's winter, 
I have I kind of have a more a darker green to uh, type of display tablescape and I have the Richard Genori plates that I have in different colors but these glasses are my great aunt Anna Fendi made them and they're they're really beautiful they're made of Murano and she took the colors of my of the different plates that I have so I have green plates white plates pink plates blue plates and and did this color combo so that it went with every type of plate that I had and that was really sweet and it was her wedding gift to us that we have wine glasses we have um, champagne glasses and when we're in the pantry I'll show you like the cutest like sherry glasses I've never drank sherry in my life but I'm so happy that I have these glasses because the day that I have port or sherry I will whip those out and maybe I'll have it just because I have the glasses <laughs> and then it's not something I I never had this on I didn't have it on my wedding um, on my wedding um, registry but uh, we had this gift from uh, a friend of ours and they're the Bucciolati name card holders. I never knew I needed a name card holder until I got this as a gift and I was like, okay, now I'm gonna use name cards. And luckily enough, I have the most brilliant friend. Uh, her name is Marta Galaz. She has a company called Casa Felix and she creates the most beautiful stationery and these are her place cards. Uh, I love stationery. I love writing letters. I love like putting name cards, gift tags, and and luckily enough, because I have my friend that does this, um, she supplies me with all of my stationery. You'll see more in the bedroom because I keep all the stationery right by my bedside because that's where I do all my writing. So our favorite thing to do is having people over for a lunch or a dinner on the weekend. And I am not a cook. Actually, all the women in our family do not cook and I will continue that tradition. And my husband's the cook and I am the hostess. And I always do the entertaining and the table display. And I said, that's always my forte. When he's around, he, his favorite thing to do, and again, it's his reminder of, he's from London, born and raised in London. And the most important thing is a Sunday roast. So we have our friends over for a late lunch and it's these big plates of, you know, roast and roasted vegetables and Yorkshire puddings and gravy and potatoes. And it's absolutely delicious, but this is kind of how it would look, you know, set up. And then we would have these big plates where people would just dig in and, and serve themselves. And it's really fun. And it's, and I just love, we love having people over because he gets to cook, I get to eat it, and then I get to show my plates. <laughs> so here I have our collection of plates. This is, uh, you could tell that I love plates because I actually don't know if I will ever use it. Maybe once, but just because. But I bought, I found this in a vintage store and they're children's plates, old children's plates from Tiffany but it has a squirrel and since, well, our family crest is a squirrel and I love squirrels, I had to get it. And they're for Massimo, the day that he can maybe handle a ceramic plate. This is, today is not the day, um, but it, they're so sweet and I just loved it and I had to get it when I saw it. But that's the type of, that's the type of thing when it comes to plates, it's gonna probably be an ongoing passion of mine that won't stop. So hopefully, I mean, my husband will probably kill me if I got any more plates, but don't tell him if we ever move in the future, I probably need a bigger space for the plates. <laughs> Thankfully, this apartment didn't have that much work to be done. When we were looking, we really wanted something that either the bathrooms were done or the kitchen was done um, and just needed light touches because it was during COVID. We didn't have that much time with my husband moving to New York. We both got new jobs. We both moved. A baby was on the way. So it was a lot of changes. And the one thing we didn't want was to spend 
two years uh, gutting and renovating an apartment. And thankfully, what was great about this apartment was that the family before us redid the bathrooms and put in all these beautiful built-ins and they had really great taste. Um, they had wallpaper and it also inspired us with how we kind of decorated the apartment. So all it needed was a really um, new lick of paint and fresh colors and what was the um, the fun part with Charlotte and Duncan, our interior designers, was that um, they've never done it in a New York apartment before. And it was, you know, we were thinking about, oh, the pre-war, the, the historic type of building, how can we revamp it? How can we refresh it into something that really belongs to a young couple and a new family? And I think with like the fantasy and the colors and the mix of something contemporary with something old is what brought this apartment to life as well. This is the pantry area of our kitchen. And this is where I keep my collection of glassware. <laughs> so as well with plates, I love having different types of glasses. Uh, and it stems from because of my my aunt and the glasses that she gifted, which are, these are the wine glasses, but these are the, over here, are the fun, the fun ones for a port or like a digestive afterwards. They're just so cute. Um, haven't used them yet, but I will. And then Campbell Ray, our friends also do glassware and I'm a champagne girl. And so these are little champagne glasses that they gifted us when we got engaged. And I love them. And they're also, again, they're all made of Murano, which I love. So this is, when we, when we saw this, we knew that the glasses would all be here. And the kitchen, it's a play of both red and blue. And the pantry, the blue, like the light blue is on the outside and the red is on the inside. And here the red comes out a little bit more with the tiles. So you can't miss the bright light in the corner. This is my husband's little herb garden. Uh, of course we don't have, which is typical in New York City, we don't have a place to like have a little garden. And since he's the cook, he loves having fresh herbs. And he's now, the basil's coming out. So that's coming out. And I think he's growing thyme as well. But this little contraption is awesome because since I don't have a green thumb, it waters itself and he doesn't need to do anything. And since we both travel a lot for work, um, it survives, which is really important. I wish a lot of other stuff could be like that. So the, the floor we put in and it's a terrazzo tile. And this was all Campbell Ray. They found the terrazzo tile we knew that this was going to be the color of the kitchen. So that's kind of where we started. Um, I call it Copenhagen blue and Copenhagen is one of my favorite places to go to. And it, it's the type of blue that I saw around a lot. And that's what I call it. It's definitely not the name of this, of this paint shade, but this is how I refer to it. And when we were looking at, what color the kitchen would be, I really wanted it to be Copenhagen blue. So from there on, they were able to find the terrazzo tiles. This backsplash is from a friend of ours who works a lot with Campbell Ray, Sarah Bellingham. And during COVID, we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to get them because she hand paints the tiles in London and then we shipped it over and somehow, you know, Charlotte and Duncan from Campbell Ray, they worked their magic and it worked out that we were able to get them because I've always have loved her tiles, just never needed them until now. And I was so happy that she was able to do these special ones for it. And it was all Campbell Ray's idea of doing the red grouting, which is so cool. Um, even our contractor was like, I've never seen that. And I was like, great, that's, that's really awesome having everyone kind of like having fun with what we were doing. My style really comes from my family, uh, from my grandmother, from my mother, uh, who love to mix different, um, different 
time periods. So it could be a lacquered Japanese with a Louis Couture's chair and, and they never really were scared that it had to be like one certain style, one certain color. And I think because of that, it really influenced my style. And I remember growing up, um, my mother always had Biedermeyer chairs everywhere. She had mirrors everywhere. So when you look at the apartment, it really reflects what I grew up with. The only difference is that it's the works of art, the friends of, that we've worked with, the artists that we've built relationships with throughout the years. Um, this is my personal addition to kind of like the long history of style that our family has, um, which I love. I feel like I have little pieces of all my friends all around the house. So this is our bedroom, and one of the main inspirations for our bedroom was David Hicks. He has these bedrooms that were completely head to toe, all in the same fabric, and I absolutely adore that. And it was like, you know, it had like curtains and the walls and the bed were all of the same fabric. My husband was like, I don't know if I can handle a complete room of the same fabric, but you can definitely go wild with the curtain and the bed. <laughs> so that's what we did. And um, this is from Spence 10. It's a Joseph Frank pattern that it's they're really famous for. And Spence 10 is a store in Stockholm, which is one of my favorite homeware stores. They have the most brilliant prints and pillows to, you know, things for the kitchen, to linens, anything you name it for the store. Even the the, on the door, that little bow like hook, that's from Sven's 10. So whenever I went to Stockholm, or actually my sister went recently and she brought me back the bow. Anyone goes to Stockholm, I a always ask them to bring me something back from that store because I'm obsessed. Um, the lampshades are uh, again painted from Luke Edward Hall. And since this is my side of the bed, so he he did a woman portrait and then for the men's side he did a man portrait and um i i just adore him and he's absolutely brilliant so i was really happy that he was able to do this the way i dress every day i'm definitely not a girly girl but somehow my house makes like because of all the flowers and the pink and it I like I wear nightgowns to bed so it's very like I'm a Victorian ghost or something like that it doesn't feel of this time so my slippers are very much like that it's like Hollywood glamour they're actually really comfortable they're padded inside they're from sleeper and they're just so chic and since we do have people come over all the time even my parents they just show up to see Massimo I have like my slippers have to be nice and these are little, I always have um, like little trinkets to put my jewelry in, which I have my like, I have my cross in there. And that's from my grandmother, my maternal grandmother. It's a vintage Wedgwood. And this is her on her wedding day. She gave me this frame because uh, again, I love frames. And I loved it with her wedding picture in it. And I kept it, I kept it and it's kind of, I just, I absolutely adore it. And it was something I just loved by my bedside. And because of this, that inspired the mirror, which is this, the Venetian type of mirror. And when I saw the frame, I really wanted to find a mirror like that. And, and Campbell Ray found it and it's gorgeous and I'm absolutely obsessed. But again, here I find, I also have my stationery which I, I'm obsessed with. And this is our personal stationery that my friend from Casa Felix made. And they're inspired by the colors of the kitchen. I have it always nearby so that I can write letters. And then of course, this this actually, I just finished reading it. It's my friend who, who, um, who wrote the book, Sarah Blakely Cartwright. It's incredible. I really, I just finished this. So I always have the book that I've, I'm reading nearby. And I only read in bed. I don't know why. Like, I'm always on my phone going to work. I don't read to work. I don't read, like, on the plane. And that's where I catch up on movies. But bedtime, 
a good book and it always puts me to sleep in the best way. The bed sheets are from Frete and they have our initials A for my husband's name, Aram. And so to kind of mark the side of our beds, um, this was a gift from my grandmother. And then the pillows in the middle, they're really cool. They're traditional buckwheat Korean pillows that I, I work a lot with Korea and a friend of ours gave it to us, one for Massimo, one for my husband and one for me. And they're just so beautiful, they're handmade uh, and it's to rest your neck, <laughs> which I love. Uh, and they're really beautiful, I, I had to have them on the bed. These little chairs, I found them at my aunt's vintage store, Triple F. They're from the 50s. The fabric is from the 50s. They're in such excellent, they're bedroom chairs. They're in such excellent condition and they were so cute. I, I had to have them and I love, you know, a chair in your bedroom ends up being like an extra closet space because you just always throw something on and over it. So when I come back from work, I always just throw my bag on, on one of these. But here are some, you know, uh, these are some fun bags that I use. I have, I'm not gonna be biased, but I am, that I only use Fendi bags. I, I think I have one Chanel bag, but most of them are Fendi. And my sister and I actually, we buy from vintage stores. We look for things that maybe aren't in, you know, production now, kind of like that, that old um, squirrel bag that I had in the entrance, but this one's an example is that Fendi had a second line called Fendissime, uh, which was kind of like the younger, um, the younger line, which they don't, they don't make anymore. And this, we found this at a vintage store and we just like died over that there was a Fendissime bag. So you, you can even see Fendissime, that's how we knew it was still there. But it's just, these are little things like we still kind of scour through different vintage stores every time we travel. Um, we're planning a big trip to Japan and my sister texted me like, I already know all the vintage stores that we're going to go to. So this is a little, a little side hobby that we do as well. And the side tables as well are from my um, aunt's uh, vintage store, Triple F. These are Paolo Buffy tables that are signed from the 50s they're incredible there were side tables for she had it presented next to a couch but my husband actually selected them and when he went to the store and saw it he was like i love these and i think with the the room that is like covered in flowers and i think he felt like they were also kind of masculine um, in that way of having his presence in the room as well um and then the the really great thing about this room is our um, the artwork in the center, right on the top. It's it's by Alessandro Teoldi. It was a gift from us from Vittorio Calabrese, who's the director of Magazzino Foundation. It's in um, Cold Springs, so definitely if you're in New York, go visit it. It's um, a museum dedicated to Italian art, and this is of a couple kissing, and it's made of airplane blankets. And it's representing my husband and I that we spent COVID, all of COVID apart because he was stuck in London for work and I just moved to New York to start my new job here. And um, when we got married after COVID, it was uh, a really special gift to us that I absolutely adore. And I think that was the first work that we put in the, in the bedroom. What I love most about our apartment is that it really does feel like the culmination of everything I've done so far for both my husband and I. There's pieces of our life together. There's people that we are friends with that are part of this home. And I think we've kind of gathered all of these little elements and created kind of like a a mini museum of our history, which which is why I love all the little bits and pieces that are in every single corner of the house. There's a memory attached to them. And everywhere else that I've lived beforehand, it was, 
you know, pieces of my parents' memories or pieces from someone else. And this really feels like it is truly our own. And every single choice that we've made, even with Charlotte and Duncan, our interior designers, it was quite meaningful to us. So everything in this apartment is really personal. This is Massimo's room, which is actually my favorite room in the house. Uh, we, when we saw this wallpaper by my friend Fee, Fee Greening, uh, she did all of our invitations for our wedding. This was kind of the center point of the, of the room because we fell in love with this wallpaper. And I thought it was great for a guest room because it could be something for adults, but as well for children. It was so childlike with all the little lucky charms. And, you know, we didn't even know that Massimo was on the way when we decided on the wallpaper. So it just really worked out. Uh, and then from there, that was the foundation. And we picked the colors because of that. We picked all the different furniture because of this wallpaper. On this wallpaper, there's um, butterflies, there's a four-leaf clover, uh, there's the flowers with the ladybug, which uh, I don't know if it's something Spanish, but they're good luck um, in Spain as well, and uh, the pearl. So it felt, you know, really fun and whimsical, which is really fee, um, and I loved it. And I think, you know, these are, even though they're snakes and stuff, it's not scary for, for children. It's just like a lot of fun. And actually when Massimo, I usually change his diaper over here. He loves looking at them and pointing to each one. And, and we, we play around with that. I love that. And this is a portrait of my aunt who sadly passed away uh, around, I think it was over 10 years ago. Um, and she is someone that's kind of my guiding light and someone that I wanted to really look over my son. So this is why I brought this portrait into, into his room. Um, these are, um, this was custom made in Venice. Uh, funnily enough, Charlotte and Duncan found them, but I was in Venice when they found it. And I was there for the Venice Biennale. So I went to the store and I looked at it and I thought it was just so much fun. Uh, and we custom made it in the sense because we needed the color to, to match with the rest of the room. And what I really wanted for this room was to be unisex. So it's not a boy's room, it's not a girl's room. It could be any type of room. And the reason why it is my favorite is because it's really calming and cozy and the carpets are cushiony and you kind of, and there's a mixture of textures and I end up on the floor playing here all day with, with my son. And I, that was really the point. And when I have friends over, they we also all come here and have tea and, and play with our kids. So it's really a convening room. These lamps, we found them on first dibs and they were a lot larger than we thought, but I th found them so fun compared to like everything big and small compared to a child. And um, the lamp, they didn't come with lampshades. And when I saw that it didn't come with lampshades, I asked my friend Luke Edward Hall if he could come and paint some. And thankfully he had a show coming up here in New York. And when he, came by, he, it was his gift to Massimo and he came and painted our lampshades here and in our, our master bedroom as well, which was really fantastic. And again, it, it speaks to the fact that we have all of these special little items from all of our friends, which I love. Um, and that comes to as well, this is a gift um, from our friend, Michael Armitage, when we got married. Um, he's a wonderful artist and I'm obsessed with his work and we were so blessed that um, him and his wife are really, really great friends of ours and he made this beautiful drawing of a woman sleeping and kind of dreaming um, and what I wanted with Massimo's room is that everything that was put in are kind of friends of ours that are really close to us and 
it, it adds to the coziness of the of the room. So the red stripe, when I was talking about it with uh, Charlotte Duncan and my husband, everyone was really unsure. I knew I wanted the the chandelier to be red and have this red stripe because this was also how I had it in my room growing up. So the red stripe, I had the same exact border in the same exact color in my room. And I felt like it was just a touch of me since this whole apartment reminded me of my childhood that I needed that to kind of be a complete full circle of having that all together. So they painted that red and they did the border red. And finally, when they, everyone saw it in person, they're like, oh, this is, it, make, it made sense. It was just hard to visualize beforehand when I said, I want a red stripe <laughs> in the middle of the room. This is Luca. And Luca is Massimo's best friend. <laughs> Massimo loves dogs and loves stuffed animals. So we have a lot of different stuffed animals and he actually goes to each one, hugs it, gives it a little kiss and like puts him down. Uh, Luca, I got when I was pregnant and I was in Aspen and I saw it in the window and it just, it's so soft, it's real fur. <laughs> My husband's like, we don't need this at all. But I was like, this is a must because I love it. And it ended up being Massimo's favorite. So I was right in the end. <laughs> this is a recent addition. So this is also the, the works on the wall. It's a continuous change because, you know, like contemporary art, I meet new people. I fall in love with new artists. And because of that, there's like bits and pieces that I want from them. And this was um, from an artist named Christina Quimez. She is, she had her first show at Y Cube in Paris. And I saw this portrait of a mother and son and it felt, you know, I just became a mother when I saw it and it really hit home and I don't have a work that is like that. Uh, and it was perfect for Massimo's room. So um, she kindly, you know, gave it to me and, and we have it here now as part of Massimo's little art gallery. <laughs> but um, I love it. It's really one of my favorites. This work is, some, it's a print that I bought many, many years ago from Cobb Gallery in London. And it says, John sees the painting I could paint that, says John, but you didn't, says mummy. <laughs> and I think that's something that is very common within the contemporary art world that everyone's like, oh, I could have done that. But it's always about being the first to do that. And so I thought this really represents what I do as an art advisor. And as well, it was perfect for Massimo's room because I'm sure that's going to maybe come up in my future. So this is one of his favorite books, um, Solo Pregunta, and it's from Sonia Sotomayor, who is a, um, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who's a good friend of ours. And it's about children helping out and she dedicated it to Massimo and just says, you know, you can change the world. And I think having these type of role models um, and learning about how children can help um, from a young age is really important. And the fact that it's so colorful and he sees all the kids playing and doing something, he's obsessed with it. Um, and the way that we've put the room was that um, everything's quite low. So even up here, Massimo can reach and he can take the book himself. He can grab the stuffed animals that he wants and every morning and every before his bedtime, he does that. He grabs a book that he wants to read or wants us to show him. And sometimes he does it himself. Sometimes he wants us to help. Um, and that's why everything's quite low in around the room. For me, a home is something very cozy. <laughs> it's somewhere that is where I want to, I'm eager to get back to. Uh, I lived around Europe for many different years. I was in London, I was in Switzerland, I was in Paris. So for home for me was very 
nomadic. It, it changed and I really felt that home was where my friends were, where my family was. And when I came back to New York, I feel like I actually learned the real meaning of a home. Now with my son and my husband, we're all under the same roof and my parents live nearby and so does my sister. Um, New York has really become my home and this home has become kind of a really different meaning to me because it feels like everything I've built upon till now have just been pieces that feel completed within this home. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.